Once in a while comes a time when I start getting a lot of emails asking me to talk about a certain discovery. In this case, this discovery. Mostly because of all of the titles that were created by various press releases that unfortunately were a little bit too clickbaity. And obviously, I'm also guilty of certain clickbaity titles in the past, but this one really takes the cake. Scientists think they've detected radio signals from alien planet. Astronomers may have detected the first radio signal coming from an alien world. Cornell scientists find first radio signal coming from an exoplanet. Okay, all of those are sort of true, but they also imply a completely different thing. They imply we've discovered a radio signal coming from aliens. Totally not what we found. As a matter of fact, it has nothing to do with aliens, but it is an extremely exciting study. And I wanted to talk about this because it does actually help us find something that we've been trying to discover for a very long time. Earth 2.0 a potentially habitable planet with an actual magnetic field that can protect the planet from dangerous radiation. And this is what this study is really about. Hello wonderful person, and today we're going to be talking about this pretty exciting study from the Cornell University that was able to test an idea that they had for a very long time that we can actually detect the magnetic fields of various planets even outside of the solar system, which is exactly what they were able to do. They were able to detect the radio emissions coming from the so-called aurora or northern lights, or southern lights if you want, of a distant object in a completely different star system. And that's the most exciting part of the study. And all of it is really based on the idea that the aurora, the northern lights, are basically responsible for producing certain types of radio waves, certain types of radio emissions, a lot of which can be seen from really far away, especially if these radio emissions are really powerful. Essentially, if the magnetic field is really strong, such as for example around Jupiter, we should be able to detect certain types of radio emissions coming from its aurora and from its magnetosphere, and we have in the past. As a matter of fact, the scientists from this paper were also able to find the similar observations on Jupiter only last year. And specifically here, they wanted to focus on trying to imagine what Jupiter would look like as essentially an exoplanet far, far away. What would its magnetic field look like as an emission from several light years away if we were to look at it using modern technology? And by taking these ideas, they then started to look around the systems where we knew similar massive planets already exist and might obviously have magnetosphere as well. And here they only focused on three main objects that we know exist for sure. The planet Jensen from 50i Cancrii, any of the massive planets in the Opsilon Andromeda system, where three major, very, very massive planets exist and do have a potential to exhibit similar effects. And lastly, the planet known as Tau Butes b, one of the first exoplanets discovered back in 1996, in a star around 51 light years away from us, and with a planet that's roughly around six masses of Jupiter in mass. And this star system is essentially where they were able to discover these signals. This is a binary system with one F-type star in the middle and a smaller red dwarf orbiting around it. And although the planet might not be apparent here, it's actually extremely close to the star in the middle. Let's go and try to find it. We actually have to come really, really close to start noticing the planet because its orbit is extremely close to the star and it obviously means that the planet is extremely hot. With the temperatures of about 1700 degrees Kelvin on the surface and the orbit being about 3.3 days, this is essentially what we would call a hot Jupiter. And in this case, it's a hot, massive Jupiter. But at the same time, this is the planet that was finally able to show us that these massive objects do possess magnetosphere and we can actually detect it from planet Earth. Now I think the best explanation I've seen so far of how this works comes from Castro, which unfortunately is the organization that no longer exists because they lost their funding and were closed about two years ago. But a few years ago they made this incredible animation that shows us exactly what we expect these planets to do and what we're seeing or what we're going to see when their magnetic field starts interacting with very highly charged particles coming from the star. Right here, what you're looking at is known as the bursty radio signals. These radio signals are essentially coming from the magnetic field interaction with the highly charged particles. And as this happens, and as essentially it starts facing planet Earth, we start seeing these signals coming from distant uh, stars and from distant planets. But in order to establish that these signals are coming from a planet and not from some other effect, or in this case that they're actually coming from an aurora of this planet, 
We obviously have to try to find these signals coming from a nearby planet that we know for a fact is emitting these signals. In this case, it was the signals coming from Jupiter that were extremely similar to the types of signals that were detected from Tau Bootes B in the frequency around 14 to 21 MHz. And so the only reasonable explanation about the signals that we see here is that it was basically a magnetosphere of this planet that's emitting them and by using this data we can try to estimate how strong the magnetosphere is and even detect some other parameters of this planet. And first of all, it seems that the theoretical prediction is extremely extremely similar to what was actually observed. The strength of magnetic field here is anywhere from maybe 5 to 11 Gauss, which is somewhat similar to what Jupiter has as well. Jupiter's uh, magnetic field ranges from about 4 to 13 Gauss, which are most likely produced through various effects similar to how they're produced on Jupiter. A huge amount of hydrogen that becomes metallic at these very high pressures and very high temperatures inside the planet. But because this is just the first such detection, we obviously need to use other radio telescopes and to try to investigate this once again and essentially see if these emissions can be seen by other observatories as well. That's the only way we're going to know for sure if we've just seen the magnetosphere of another exoplanet. Because technically this could also be, well, maybe an accidental flare that just happens to have a very similar frequency to what we expect from an emission from a Jupiter-like planet. But assuming that this is indeed what we've just discovered and this is indeed what the scientists saw, what does it actually mean for our search for the next Earth 2.0? Well, as you probably know, magnetospheres are extremely important for the survival of various elements on the surface of the planet. I mean, the best example here is the planet Earth versus planet Mars. We know that Mars lost all of its uh, habitability simply because it just didn't have a magnetosphere. And so being able to find a magnetosphere of various exoplanets is extremely important in our attempt to try to discover another habitable planet somewhere out there. And so once we're able to create an extremely powerful technique and also have really powerful telescopes able to see these emissions coming from distant exoplanets, we're then going to have an extremely important technique in order for us to discover other planets that could be very similar to planet Earth. And obviously the first such target is probably going to be the famous TRAPPIST-1 system, the system with seven different terrestrial objects, where even one of these objects possessing a magnetosphere could actually have a high chance to have habitable conditions on the surface. But obviously all of this is still in far future once we have better techniques and of course better observatories watching the night skies. But I guess until we discover more or until we find another exoplanet that exhibits these magnetosphere effects, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper and all of the relevant studies in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Or you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you see me wearing in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out and as always, bye-bye.